So we're here today at Southwest Airlines and we're going to be taking a tour of their operations center called the NOC, their maintenance hangars, as well as their main headquarters building and their training center. So stick around and you'll get to see some awesome video. We're standing here outside the NOC building. So this is the Southwest Airlines Operations Center. And once we get inside, we can see there's a Southwest Airlines store full of different things you can buy, apparel, baggage, things, anything you need, and then also a check-in desk. And so once we get checked in, we'll head inside the NOC, or Network Operations Center. Here's our view of the floor of the NOC, or Network Operations Control, at Southwest Airlines. And now we're going to step down into the floor and get a little bit of an orientation of what's where on the floor. But here we have crew scheduling, international operations desks, domestic operations desks, maintenance control, and what's called the bridge, a raised area in the East center the of the floor. Um, here we've got some turbulence. The circle is for areas of turbulence. Now, come on in. Now, what do you think is causing the turbulence? What have we got right here? Jet stream. Okay, and how fast is it traveling? 100 knots, 90 knots. Yeah, and it's making a turn. So you can think of, if you just think of the energy that's going on in the atmosphere, then you can anticipate that there will not be any fog because this is an active air mass, right? It's really stirring it up. So if it's, we've got the Sierras out here and you've got this coming down and making a turn, it's also crossing, what do we got right here? What kind of front? Cold front. A cold front. And then this little piece right here, I'll zoom in if you'd like for me to. Front. It's an occluded front. And do y'all know what an occluded front is? It's whenever a cold front overtakes a warm front. Sure, sure. Now we've got the low sitting out here. What's the circulation around the low? Okay, and what's the center doing? Is it lifting or is it descending? Lifting. It's lifting, that's right. So when you combine all of that with what are the ingredients of a thunderstorm? There's three, three ingredients of a thunderstorm. You've got lifting is one, so that's part of the low moisture and uh, instability. Instability, right. So you've got all of that coming together right there. So I would be curious to watch this. The only piece we might be missing is is moisture. So if you come over here to the METAR for Phoenix. Now Phoenix is desert, so we may be missing one of the ingredients. Let's get it up here. Temp dew point, what's that tell you? 19 over 3. Mm, low dew point. Not yeah, a lot of not a lot of moisture. So we may be missing one of our ingredients. So that means we may have some showers that are coming to move in. You can see some a little bit of moisture, but not much. Here we can see this is an air, another area of potential turbulence. And then, well, I've got it on animated, so you can kind of see it jumping around. Mm -hmm. Most generally, where do you see your turbulence uh, along the jet stream? On the on the southern side or on the polar side? Oh. Uh, <coughs> the polar side. That's good. <laughs> exactly. And you can see it kind of moves to the north there. Maybe I'll take off some of the animation. So this, the way this is spinning around this low is, like you said, counterclockwise. So if we're looking, we're going to watch for showers here in uh, Salt Lake. You've got to look how closely related these lows are. And then in the middle, we've got a pyrep. And who's good at pyreps? Right. You, step, you can just read hey. what altitude, what aircraft type, and what they're experiencing. Light to moderate turbulence. Light to moderate shock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're messaging him with A cars uh -huh. right now? Okay. Yeah. 
But right now you can see his lat longs, his altitude, he's at 2962, his computed airspeed, true airspeed, uh, he's got 13.7 on the fuel, and then what his winds are. And what he weighs right now based on the weight that they put in at departure time from their weight pouch. So it just times out. It doesn't actually know how much fuel is on board. Does it actually know how much fuel is on board? It actually knows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. With, within well, about 100 pounds. Okay. I mean, uh, in tagging up with the crew and they're in holding, they're advising us how much fuel they've got on board. It's always been within 100 pounds. And okay. it's, it's, it's probably a rounding issue, but okay. it's actually pretty good. Hmm. So they cannot lie. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but you can see it, which is good because you can kind of stay in right, ahead right. of what's so, going on with the flight instead of just saying how much fuel do you have and waiting for them to absolutely, answer. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can be making your plan. I see you've got 13.7 on board. So if he's, he's going open to Vegas. <laughs> He's coming in here. We can see we've got thunderstorms outside of Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, so if it looks like they're going to go into holding, which we can also see. Let's see. Bad. Arriving flights. You can see the flights getting through that area. They're not going into the area that seems more significant here. You can see they're shooting the gap in between it, coming around it. Uh, and then we'll add all of the flights coming into Vegas. And then also, on top of that, let's look and see. So Vegas can land... What's your arrival rate, your right, arrival rate? That's okay. exactly right. They can land 11 aircraft in for every 15 minutes. So that okay. kind of gives you an idea where your spikes are. Okay, so they're either going to do S-turns, slow them down a little bit. So it's not too bad. So they're staying... They're, they're staying right up. Oh, did you see it just changed? Mm. So it updates every 15 minutes also. Okay. Okay. So if you've got flights running late, you're holding for passengers, then it kind of updates. If you've got some maintenance issues, it'll change. So let's see what he says. Uh, light turbulence, 250 to 27. Otherwise smooth. Uh, let's see. Great. Well, you know what? We are going to send that pie rep out to everybody. Um, you can do it on the National Pi Rep Editor. Oh. Hmm. Um, so we go back to the How Goes It. We'll put in his lap longs 37, 11, 120. And you can insert it as a VOR in airport, current time. Altitude, we'll just pull that right off of there. Boeing 733. Temperature is minus 44. Wind is 346. At 044. And he said, light. And we'll put in there, that's Oakland to Las Vegas. It puts it into the little code. And then I'm going to send it to him. To let him know we passed it on. So other crews behind him will know because it does say that it's in an area of potential turbulence and we can validate that with it's not moderate turbulence, it's not severe, it's light. So we can absolutely do that. So it makes some assumptions about what that's going to uh, look like. Looks like we're tapering fuel in. We're trying to save a little money on the fuel. We're going to get there with 7.2, which is plenty. We'll double check our route real quick. Uh, let's do Oakland to Spokane. Uh, These are your saved routes. These are our saved routes. We'll see if we're going through any turbulence because we'll want to consider that. Coming up, clear shot. There's nothing around Spokane. This is, let's see what's, how that's moved. It's drifting back this way, but it seems like as it hits the ridge of the mountains up here, it's somewhat dying out. So I feel very comfortable with this one hour and 39 minute flight that this is going to be plenty. 
so we will send that off. And you just do that 77 times a day. We're going to head past a simulated check-in counter and then into a simulated gate area so that the gate agents can get trained and the operations oh. agents can get trained on the check-in. Thank you all for uh, joining us today. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all at Southwest for having Here we can see some various training aids, including a raft, different door trainers that the flight attendants use in their training, and this large training simulator that has smoke as well as working evacuation slides. Here we're approaching the Southwest Airlines maintenance hangar, um, which is going to be really interesting to see all the different airplanes undergoing maintenance. Here we have one with the ray dome open and uh, lots of heavy equipment nearby. This airplane has been basically totally taken apart uh, in, for its maintenance inspection. So when an airplane reaches six years, we start opening it up and looking more in depth. So and then every two years it kind of repeats, but within those two years you do different areas of the aircraft. So at six years you do the wings, the, gap, the cargo area, stuff like that. When the airplane's eight years old, you start looking into the wet areas, so you pull the labs out, the galleys out, and you check for corrosion in those areas. That's where they're prone. The 12 Y gets to be the first extensive check. Everything's open up. So this one here, you'll see the inside gutted out, all the E&E and &E, electrical equipment will be out of the aircraft. So that's one of the most extensive checks we do here. Uh, so that one's a 12Y. This is a 10Y, which is more wing area, cargo area, and stuff like that. That airplane just got in here, so that one I don't even think it's even opened up. But we'll kind of walk away. These are temporary floorboards in. They, uh, they'll pull all the floorboards up for inspection. Okay. And then they'll just throw down temporary floorboards because they don't want the ones that were on here damaged as they're in there working. Here you go. Everybody can step in here. You get to give everybody room to get in. wash it outside, they'll bring it in, and then they'll start opening everything up on the 12Y. As you can see, all the interior is going to come out, and then once everything is opened up, the inspection group will come in here and they'll just start inspecting certain areas, you know, that's on their criteria, their task card. They'll check those areas, and it's areas that they're known to have prone issues, cracks, corrosion, stuff like that. So, so they'll look for any defects. They'll uh, go ahead and they'll go ahead and write those defects up, and then the mechanics will start coming in and working them. So you usually find scratches. Yeah, you'll find quite a few. Yeah. So surprisingly, um, see here's a good example on this frame here. So this is a prevent mod that came out. So it's it's just to stiffen this area up, and because um, they're they're prone to crack. So just historical data on the on 737, um, Boeing has all that information, we have the information, so they know these particular areas come. So every so many hours or years, they'll come back and in inspect them. We're looking at one of the four bays that Southwest has at their Dallas Love Field facility, and four basic bays for heavy maintenance exist at this facility. already have the experience when they come in um, so we just make sure they understand the general aircraft itself uh, we do have an apprentice program where uh, people that have an AMP license but don't have the full experience we have a two-year apprentice program we run them through that when they're done with that 
There are full flexion yeah. pieces, but they know every aspect of the maintenance. So if we move them around from different groups, they'll work the line for a while. They'll come work the hanger. They'll work C check, and they'll they'll know the full aspect of the whole the whole operation. Especially inside the hanger, you know, if they have to close the doors, there's no airflow. They'll start pumping in the air conditioning. How many, pretty cool. how many mechanics do you have working here, do you know? Here in Dallas, it's uh, yep. roughly about 650. 50. That's between heavy maintenance and the air immediate yeah. side. Okay. We try to keep about 30 per shift in each day here at all times. It's 24 hours. Graveyard shifts a little bit more of a lighter crew, skeleton crew, will kind of work critical path items at those times. We're going to transition into the pilot training department, which you can see here has a nice area for the pilots to relax between classes. This and I will see the just doesn't devices. have the motion. It has the graphics and all the buttons and the seats and all of that, but um, of course no motion. So they do this before they go into sims. Another way to practice. Here we have a panel where the instructor can simulate failures and then inside this flight training device, this device doesn't have motion but it has everything the pilots can use to practice their procedures um, before they get into the full motion device. And these devices, they have touch screens. Uh, sometimes airlines have these basically made of paper, but this one has touch screens so that the flight crews can practice their procedures over and over and over and over until they have them memorized completely before they get into the full motion simulators, which we're going to see in a few moments. And the 7 and 800 model, 737. Um, Time we light them up with Christmas lights. It's really fun. But um, as you can see, it's up on motion. And uh, I'm sure you probably have been inside one. But uh, you can just look really good. You can hear where they tell you you are. Uh, it's amazing device. So they have, for this session, they do an hour and a half brief in these briefing rooms with the instructor. And then they're in the sim and they take a short break. Come back and do a deep breath for half an hour. About a four hour session. Uh, the current pilots have uh, come back to the current, like the normal flight. It's all things that we hope they never have to encounter, but we want to be sure of no one. I mean, they do everything from power outages to fires to wind shear, thunderstorms.
Let's head into one of the Boeing 737-300 series simulators. You can see it has analog gauges. Uh, these are very soon going to be removed from Southwest Airlines fleet. And uh, next we're going to show you a, another Southwest Airlines simulator. This one for the 737-700 series. And this one you're going to see is much more digitized in the cockpit. Uh, we have these little catwalks that the crews go over in order to get into the device and then the catwalk retracts before the device begins its movements. It's to live the Southwest way, so they choose a charity and um, make a donation. The Typical amount is seven hundred and thirty-seven dollars, same as you know, seven thirty-seven, and then the cents are usually the number of their class.